The Nintendo DS is easily my favorite game system of all time. It was responsible for popularizing touchscreen input, was revolutionary with its dual-screen layout, and appealed to both casual and hardcore gamers alike, with its huge library of fantastic titles. I got a DS Lite back when I was around 7 or 8 years old, and I will never forget all the amazing experiences I had playing games on it. However, there was one particular game cartridge that came out for the DS around that time that I really wanted to get my hands on. Being a young kid at the time, though, I didn't have any money, and looking back at it in hindsight, I fully understand why my parents wouldn't help me find it. This cartridge was known as the R4, or Revolution for DS. It took the shape of a standard DS game card with a shiny label, and featured a micro SD card slot on top. If you were to take DS game ROMs or homebrew applications and put them on the micro SD card, and then put that card into the R4, you could load the ROMs and play them right on your DS without using an emulator. The R4's ability to run commercial ROMs also opened the floodgates to, you guessed it, lots of software piracy. There were several lawsuits and crackdowns on merchants in the years that followed, leading to flashcarts becoming illegal in many territories. The R4 flashcart quickly became popular with homebrew enthusiasts and DS owners in general, and it wasn't long until lots of fake, cheap R4 clones and new competitors like the TTDS and Ace card hit the scene. A lot of other stuff happened in the following years, including Nintendo trying to patch out flashcarts with system updates on the DSi and 3DS, with several flashcart manufacturers releasing their own updates, but that tug-of-war has been dead for several years now, with Nintendo seemingly not caring anymore. So, we've reached the point where the original R4 is no longer sold, the team that originally made it is long gone, and the already small DS flashcart market is comprised entirely of clones and quote-unquote successors, with varying levels of questionability and trustworthiness. As a kid with a really shitty computer, the R4 was an absolute holy grail. A true plug-and-play solution to play any DS game I wanted? Hell yeah! Except, I had no way of getting one, and they became obsolete and unusable basically as soon as the DSi came out. But I still wanted one desperately. Now I'm 19 and I know not to download game ROMs from the internet, so an R4 would be more of a tool to keep my game collection backed up and safe on one convenient cartridge. Now that the market has slowed down significantly and the DS family of systems isn't getting new games anymore, I decided that I wanted to try out one of these flashcards myself to find out what conveniences and cool homebrew stuff I'd been missing out on for all these years. On November 15th, I went to eBay and looked up R4DS, and then I found this for sale almost immediately. The R4 Gold Pro for 7 bucks with free shipping from China. Or, more specifically, 2019 R4 Gold Pro R4i SDHC 4DS 3DS 2DS Revolution Cartridge with USB Adapter. Catchy. It claimed to support not only all DS games, but also cheats, real-time save states, 3DS compatibility, and it was cheap as hell, so I figured, hey, why not? I'll give it a shot. I placed the order, went over to Walmart and picked up a 16 gig micro SD card for about 5 bucks, then proceeded to sit completely motionless in my room for the next month while I waited for the flashcart to be delivered. On December 14th, the flashcart finally arrived at my door. It came in a cardboard box, which I really wasn't expecting for it being so cheap, and upon opening it, there it was, in shiny gold packaging, the R4 Gold Pro. It came with the cartridge and the USB adapter as advertised. So, let's try it out. First things first, I need to copy the kernel to my micro SD card. In this context, the kernel isn't a guy that cooks chicken, it's kind of like firmware. I formatted my micro SD card to FAT32 with 32 kilobyte allocation units, and then I went to the website on the card's sticker and downloaded the English version. And then I extracted all the files to the micro SD card. Next, I went to my DS backups folder and copied over a couple games for testing. I'll be testing using Zelda Spirit Tracks, Pokemon Black version 2, Mario Kart DS, Pokemon Heart Gold version, and the Game Yob emulator with Pokemon Silver and Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah, and I'll use newer Super Mario Bros. DS to test ROM hacks. I'll be subjecting every game to most of the same tests, but I do have certain other special tests to see just how fully fledged the flash cart is in comparison to others. I'm going to challenge Mario Kart DS's Wi-Fi capabilities with Wiimify and NDS constraint, and Pokemon Heart Gold's ability to connect to a Wii with Pokemon Battle Revolution. But before I start, let me get this out of the way. 
All the games I'll be testing with today have been dumped from my own official cartridges. I do not condone downloading commercial games for free from the internet. Additionally, here are the results I got from performing my testing with original cartridges. Alright, with that out of the way, let's put the microSD into the R4 Gold Pro and get started. First up, I booted the game and the menu appeared. So far, so good. I selected Game, and then my list of backups appeared, every single one intact. First, I selected New Super Mario Bros. just as a small test, and it booted up with no problems. I played the first level, and still no issues. So, looks like the card works. Time to bring on my gauntlet of challenges. First on the list was Zelda Spirit Tracks. This game features not only a big story mode, but also a multiplayer mode with DS download play. Before I test that, though, this game also has a neat anti-piracy measure. When you enter the tutorial where Link has to drive the train to the castle, the game will refuse to load the controls if it detects it's not being played on an official cartridge. However, it looks like the R4 Gold Pro knows how to account for this, because I was able to pass the tutorial with no problem. Plus, download play works just fine too. Next up was Pokemon Black version 2. This game is notorious for refusing to boot at all on certain flash carts, and for having a couple anti-piracy measures. But the R4 Gold Pro handled it like a champ. Not only did the game boot and play just fine, but I was also able to gain experience points in battle. If the anti-piracy check had kicked in, my starter would have been stuck at level 5 for the entire game. Now to begin one of the two big tests, Mario Kart DS. I assumed download play would work with no trouble at all, which I was correct about, but one thing I wasn't exactly sure on was Wi-Fi. Using an old router that supported WEP, the NDS constraint exploit, and a custom matchmaking server called Weemify, I was able to connect my game to the internet and play a couple races with my friends Hapo and Classy. Hapo was using a Japanese retail copy of Mario Kart DS, and Classy Javelin was playing on the Melon DS emulator. Considering the diversity of the hardware, I wasn't expecting this to work in the slightest, but it did. Awesome. The second big test was Pokemon Heart Gold, and not just Pokemon Heart Gold, but also connecting to Pokemon Battle Revolution. First, I needed to test the game to see if the anti-piracy check would trigger. If I had, initiating a battle with certain trainers would have resulted in a soft lock. I'm pleased to report that this didn't happen. Next up, I booted up my Wii, started Pokemon Battle Revolution, and hit DS Battle. I connected the R4 Gold Pro, and... much to my dismay, all I got was a white screen. Looks like I got my hopes up too high. Alright, on to the next test. Emulation is a big reason for people to buy a cheap flash cart like this one. While there are a bunch of emulators all over the Google Play Store for Android phones, it's kind of a bad experience to play games on them because of the lack of physical buttons on a phone. Granted, you can connect a Bluetooth controller, but at that point, you might as well just use a PC. With the DS, however, you've got a D-pad, four face buttons, and two shoulder buttons, making it a much more attractive option. I downloaded the Game Yob emulator and tried two of the Game Boy games I own, Pokemon Silver and Donkey Kong. I'm pleased to report that not only did they both work as intended and ran at full speed, but they also supported the Super Game Boy borders and enhancements. The only real issue I ran into was that Pauline's voice clips didn't play in Donkey Kong, but overall it was a great experience. Definitely beats playing the Game Boy Color with no backlight. On to the final test, ROM hacks. Looking back at it, I probably should have saved the Wii test for last because, as expected, newer Super Mario Brothers work just fine. Nothing to report here, I guess. So, yeah. The R4 Gold Pro plays all the games I tested with no AP issues. It works with homebrew, emulators, multiplayer, and download play. And it's a lot faster than swapping cartridges in and out whenever I want to play another game. The only real downside is the lack of Wii compatibility. Almost a perfect solution, right? Well... Not quite. The cheap clone cards from R4ISDHC.com, like this one, that litter the market today, contain a deep, dark secret that most owners don't know about. If I were to, say, advance my DS's clock a couple years to simulate the passing of time, and then attempt to use my so-called almost perfect solution and play some games, uh-oh, wrong date or firmware expired? What? This, my friends, is what is known as a time bomb. It's not a literal bomb and it won't explode, so don't worry about that. The kernel files supplied by the flashcart's manufacturer contain some secret malicious code that intentionally renders the cart unusable once a certain date has passed. I assume to just encourage the owner to buy another cart. But what can I do about it? Can I just strip out the code? Unfortunately, the manufacturer-supplied kernel is not open source, and it hasn't been reverse-engineered by anyone, at least to my knowledge. 
However, we still do have a solution to this issue. YS Menu is an alternative option to the official kernel of many DS flashcarts, originally developed for older flashcarts like the R4 and TTDS by Yasu, and it's maintained currently by Retro Game Fan, or RGF. There exist a plethora of different releases of YS Menu for several different brands of flashcarts, and fortunately for us, there is in fact a release compatible with the R4 Gold Pro. If I go to Retro Game Fan's thread and download the latest release, and then take the kernel files and put them on the micro SD card in place of the old kernel, in theory, success! We've successfully booted into YS Menu and bypassed the time bomb entirely. YS Menu is a hell of a lot prettier than the stock kernel, and it's miles faster too. When I last tested it a couple years ago on a similar flash cart, certain games like Pokemon Black and White and the sequels didn't quite work. But I assume it might have just been an error on my part. I ran my gauntlet of tests again, and can confirm that all the games play and save just fine on the latest version. Plus, all the saves I already had from the last kernel still work perfect, and there's still cheat support too. We might have lost out on RTS in the process of switching to YS menu and Wii connectivity may still not work, but I'll definitely take all that over a time bomb. So, conclusion time. Would I still recommend the R4 Gold Pro and other cheap DS flashcards in lieu of the whole time bomb debacle thanks to YS menu? Well, I guess I would. If you know what you're getting into. As I said before, the time bombs on these cheap cards really fucking suck, but you can just use YS menu to bypass that if you're willing to live with the downsides. Of which, there really aren't any. If you want to get one of these cards, perhaps for yourself or maybe a cheap gift to a friend who loves the DS just as much as you do, try to find one at the cheapest price you can from a known trusted seller. Install YS menu on it right away and don't even bother with the stock kernel. Personally, I wouldn't trust any card with r4isdhc.com printed on it because they all have time bombs. My favorite DS flash cart, by far, is the R4i Gold 3DS Plus. It's a clone of the original R4, with some added functionality, and it works with the 3DS and the wood kernel. Plus, no time bomb. I've personally been using this card for my Friday Night Pokemon Randomizer live streams over this past year, so I can definitely vouch for its reliability. It usually retails for around 20 bucks. Oh, by the way, yes, it does work with Battle Revolution. However, if you want an even cheaper option than anything I've shown thus far, you can hack your 3DS or DSi and install Twilight Menu. Granted, it's not nearly as compatible with games as the flashcards are, but it's still in active development and is improving rapidly. You can even use it to launch flashcards that got patched out by Nintendo's firmware updates. If you're interested in storing and playing your DS game dumps in a super convenient way, or want to try out the awesome homebrew and emulators the community's come up with over this past decade, I would definitely recommend picking up a DS flash cart. Pretty much any of the more recent ones will do, just be sure to do your research first so you're aware of time bombs or other shortcomings. And with that, that's about all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this departure from the regular kind of content I make. I've always been absolutely fascinated by the weird world and fragmented history of DS flashcards, and I'm glad I finally got the opportunity to share some of that with you guys. As always, I do streams over on Twitch multiple times a week, link in the description, and I'm always thinking about new video ideas. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you personally had an R4 or other DS flashcard growing up, or if you're interested in more content like this. Until next time, peace!